Good morning, church family and everyone wherever you are. If you're a church member, then you will have heard about the death of Roma Wyburn at the age of 96 on Wednesday. We will miss her very much and we grieve with her family. But we're thankful that because of Jesus, we grieve with hope, knowing that Roma is with Christ, which is far better, and that she is expectantly awaiting resurrection. With that in our minds, let's pray together. Father, we give thanks to you this morning for the long life that you gave to Roma and even more for the eternal life that you gave her. Thank you for all that she contributed to our church life. How wonderful to know that death is gain for her, and that she and we have the sure and certain hope of resurrection to come. Please comfort her family and all who feel the sadness of her absence. Please draw to Jesus those who don't yet know him. And please help with the funeral arrangements, especially with the complications of this present time. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this morning we are continuing our series through the book of Philippians and using the Apostle Paul's own words from chapter 1, verse 21, we have given this series the title, To Live is Christ. Uh, Paul says that that is true of him, and we want the outcome, the result of this series to be that it is more and more true of all of us as well. And so we're going to sing our first hymn now in which we ask God to make that the case. Lord, be my vision supreme in my heart. Bid every rival give way and depart. <laughs> Thank you. 
there's so much that I miss about us being able to meet together. I long for the time when we'll be able to do so again, and I hope you do too. But one thing I am enjoying about doing our services online is the opportunity to see and hear from different people from our church family and indeed from around the world. And that is the case again this morning. So it's over now, first of all, to Andy and Jean to lead us in prayer, and then to Jake to speak to the children. Good morning, everybody. Uh, uh, greetings uh, to you from us here in uh, Brockworth. I would say sunny Brockworth, but the clouds have just come over. Okay, good morning. Let's pray. Thank you. Our Father, for your holiness and power, we are glad that you are in complete control of our present world situation. May your will be worked out in our lives at this time, even though we don't understand, knowing that everything will come out right. In these times of shortages and difficulties of getting out and about, enable us to have sufficient to eat. Have mercy on those who have lost their livelihoods, both <coughs> here and abroad. Forgive us our hard thoughts about others. Forgive us our acts of selfishness and help us to be open-hearted and forgiving towards all whom we meet or have dealings with. Keep us from making bad choices, doing wrong things, and following the baser inclinations of our hearts. Help us to live for your coming kingdom every day that you give us. Amen. Amen. Lord, in these times of crisis, there are many things we want to thank you for. Most of us can thank you for health, for food, for gardens, for being able to go for a walk every day, for our church family, for modern technology, and for so many things. We do want to pray for those who are alone, for those who are missing hugging their grandchildren, for those who aren't well enough to take a walk for those who have the virus or have other health issues. Lord, we pray for those who are working and studying from home and find it a strain with several people working and living in such a small space. Lord, we pray for those who still have to leave the house to work each day, essential workers, those in contact with the coronavirus in their work, Give them peace and the assurance that they need not fear. They're in your arms and they're safe in you. Thank you for today's services. We can't see each other, but you've brought us together and we want to ask you to speak to every single one of us. The children, the lonely, the ones who are longing to have a bit of privacy, the weary, the frightened, those who are listening who don't yet know you. Lord, we need you and we need you to speak to us. We pray that you'll take what Phil has already preached onto um, a, um, a recording and you bring it alive with power in our hearts today. We thank you that we love and serve a risen saviour who's in the world today so these prayers will not go unheard. You are alive. Please, we want to know and feel you close to us today and throughout the week. Amen. Amen. Morning, everyone. Morning, children. Now, it's lovely to see you all this morning. I hope that you're all keeping well, keeping safe. Now, I want to show you something that I've bought. Okay. Yeah, that's right. It's a garden chair. It's for outdoors. Don't worry. I bought it online. It's not an essential item. And now that the rain has started, sun's gone away, it's arrived. Brilliant. 
Now, I'm going to try and sit on this chair. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Yeah, this doesn't feel right. Okay, let's try it this way. Like this. Sit down and relax. Okay, so it's quite clear that that doesn't work. Now, can anybody tell me what do I need to do first to sit on this chair? What do I need to do? That's right, of course, I need to open it. That's the first thing I need to do. Now, opening it up is really, really important, isn't it? So that I can actually sit on the chair. There we go. I can sit down in my chair. Lovely, okay. Now, in the Bible, it says that we must seek God first. Sometimes as humans, we seek other things first before we seek God. This might be things like a toy or a hobby or a game that you really like. And even for adults too, putting things like money or relationships, they put these things first. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, it says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. The Bible tells us to trust in God in all that we do, because he is the most important thing. God has created us and the universe. He's so powerful and he allows us to come to him through Jesus. Isn't that amazing? Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for all the great things that you give us. Please help us to put you first in whatever we do and to trust in you. In your great name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you, Jake. A really important verse and message for us all. We're going to sing a hymn now which reminds us why it is God who we should seek first. The chorus says, Behold our God, seated on his throne, Come, let us adore him. Behold our king, nothing can compare. Come, let us adore him.
Hi everyone, greetings from Send. Phil has asked me to do a Bible reading for you and give a little update on us as a family and also uh, how things are going at Send Evangelical Church where I'm the pastor. Uh, if you don't know, Send is uh, in a village, is a village near Woking in Surrey. Um, so for us, lockdown is very challenging. Uh, we've got two children, both on the autism spectrum with quite differing needs they're prone to anxiety got mental health struggles other challenges as well so we really uh, appreciate your prayers uh, particularly for phoebe um, do be praying for her uh, and praying that in all her struggles and trials that she'd be looking to god to help her when she's anxious and stressed and that she would be learning to rely on him and then for the rest of us, uh, keep praying, particularly again for Sophie. Sophie, uh, you know, I'm working a lot of the time. Sophie is getting a lot of the brunt of Phoebe's uh, ups and downs and anxiety. And so that for, for both of us, we'd know how to be patient and kind and know how, how best to help her and parent her. Uh, Solomon's doing well um, in all, all the challenges. Um, so uh, thank you for your, your prayers for him as well. As a church, we're we're massively encouraged at the moment. Uh, like most churches, we've switched to online services, and we're finding we're getting more people tuning in and connecting than usual. And so that that's really good. Uh, and we know some of them are not believers, and so we're just really praying that as the word goes out, that it would speak to people. Uh, I'm reminded that uh, when Paul was in under house arrest in chains, which we are in a slightly different sense uh, but he wrote that the word of God is not bound um, and so we may not be able to go out very much but the word of God can go out further and wider than ever before so we've just started a series in Luke's gospel and really praying that looking at the life of Jesus will uh, draw people to him but de definitely our biggest encouragement at the moment is a Christianity Explored course we're doing on Zoom on Sunday evenings and uh, again, following that pattern, we've got more people signed up and coming along than we've had on any Christianity Explore, Explore course since I've been here in Send. Um, for example, we've got, we've got one recent convert in our church. His son lives in India. He's invited his son. His son is now staying up until midnight local time um, to join in on the course. Others as well who said, have said they wouldn't normally come along. But there's just this great degree of spiritual interest at the moment. So... Um, yeah, do, do pray for our Christianity Explored. Pray for the, the technology issues. We had, we had someone miss out on the last session because they couldn't get Zoom to work. Um, pray that the, the word would grow, bear great fruit, and uh, we would just really be encouraged at this time. Right, I'm going to be uh, reading the Bible to you now from Philippians chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. So let's hear the word of God. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are at Philippi with the overseers and deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It's right for me to feel this way about you all because I hold you in my heart, for you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus, and it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent, and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. Thanks be to God for his word. Love to you all in Trinity. Philippians 1, 1 to 11 seems like a fantastic passage for me to read to you um, because I am so grateful for all the time we have had together um, and so grateful for your prayers for me as also I pray for you, you. So love to you all. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Well, great as always to hear from Pete there. 
uh, do pray for him, his family, and the church in Send. Last Sunday, Matt helped us to think about verses 1 to 8. So this morning, we are going to focus on verses 9 to 11 of Philippians chapter 1. I'm sure it will really help you if you have your Bible open in front of you and follow along as we go. On the end of our living room door are marks showing the height of each of our children at different ages. Every so often they measure themselves again and they want to have grown some more. Now as most people stop growing before they reach the age of 20, the majority of you watching this should be perfectly content if you don't grow any more in height for the rest of your life. But in Philippians chapter 1 verses 9 to 11, the Apostle Paul talks about a way in which every single one of us should always, like our children, want to grow some more. In these verses, Paul is telling the Christians in the city of Philippi that he prays for them to grow more and more in love. Look at the beginning of verse 9. And it is my prayer that your love may abound, may grow more and more. This morning, then, we are going to think about growing in love. And we're going to do so under three headings. Heading number one is growing in love, we should all aim to. We should all aim to. Now, later in this letter, we will see that Paul does give some correction to people in the Philippian church in relation to loving each other. But it's also clear from the letter as a whole that this was an all-round healthy church. And what Paul has written so far shows that includes in the area of love. Chapter 1, verse 5 and verse 7 indicate that these Christians have shown love to Paul himself. And that is confirmed at the end of chapter 4. And now notice that chapter 1 verse 9 does not say that the Philippian Christians are a loveless bunch of people. Paul is not praying in these verses for unloving people to become loving. Rather, he is praying for people who are loving to continue to grow more and more in that love. That's why in verse 4, Paul said that he prays for this church with joy. He is genuinely encouraged with them, including with their love. So something to notice from that then is that even for such Christians as the Philippians, even for such a church as the church in Philippi, there is still room for growth. Let me ask you this morning, is that your mindset? Or do you approach your Christian life in the same way I approach car maintenance. You see, I only think about topping up the oil or water or doing anything to the car when a warning light comes on to say that there is a problem. As long as you have not fallen out with anyone or there is nothing glaringly wrong in your life, are you content? Or like the Apostle Paul, will you pray for your love to keep growing more and more? 
whatever there is to be encouraged about concerning your love for God and for other people, will you aim to keep growing in it? Will you think practically about what steps you could take to see that happen? Also notice here that Paul is praying for others, for their growth in love. Now let me say to you this morning, perhaps you are painfully aware of all the things you cannot do during this time of lockdown. But the example of the Apostle Paul in these verses, should encourage you that praying for other people is a truly significant thing to do. So if praying for other people is one of the few things that you can do at the moment, don't be discouraged. And if you are doing that, then keep doing so. And take these verses as an encouragement that as well as asking for health and safety for people, you could also ask for them to grow in love. Now, of course, to be precise, the issue with our love is not whether we love, but rather is what we love. We actually all love things, but the question is, are they the right things? And that's why in verse 9 and 10, Paul expands his description of how he prays for the Philippians to grow in love. So let's read from the start of verse 9 again and go a little bit further this time. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent. Paul asks God that the Philippians will have knowledge of the true level of excellence of each thing. And that therefore, their love will be in line with that. I wonder, do you feel like you need help with that? I, for example, am persistently aware that at times, I love a quiet life and time to watch TV above people including Kate and my children, which is getting things upside down. Well, if you do feel like you need help with aligning your love in the right way, then do you realise God has given us a great tool to help us with this issue? What is that? The Bible. The Bible shows to us the perfect example of what our love should look like. Jesus always and perfectly approved what is excellent. And therefore, in showing us him, the Bible gives us the knowledge of what that looks like. It calls us to love God, of course, above all else. And it stirs up that love in us by showing us God's beauty and greatness. The Bible draws us to love other people too, even in ways that cost us something, by showing us the beautiful and inspiring example of Jesus the one who did that supremely. And the Bible urges us away from loving too much ourselves or stuff that does not last by showing us 
the ugliness and foolishness of that. To pick up the final word Paul uses in verse 9 as well, the Bible also helps us to discern what love looks like in particular situations and with particular people. As just one example, I love the practical wisdom of 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 14, where we're told to admonish, that is warn or challenge the idle, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all. If you want then to grow more and more in love that is according to knowledge and that is discerning, then immerse yourself in the Bible so that you can consider Jesus the King of love. And through the Apostle Paul, here in Philippians chapter 1, God says to us first of all this morning that it is right and good for all of us to want and to aim to do just that, to grow in love that is according to knowledge and that is discerning. So we see first of all in these verses... Growing in love, we should all aim to. Secondly, though, we see in these verses, growing in love, we have the greatest reason to. We have the greatest reason to. So if, if for you life is about fame then you will want to win X Factor or something similar. If for you life is about money, you will want to do all you can to earn or win lots of it. If for you life is about success, then you might want to get A stars in all of your exams. If for you life is about popularity, then you will do whatever other people want you to do. Well, in the book of Philippians, the Apostle Paul tells us what his life is about. Based on what he says in chapter 1, verse 21, we have called this series, To Live is Christ. So because Paul's life is about Jesus Christ, what Paul wants and aims to do is to please and glorify Jesus Christ. And he tells the Philippians in chapter 1, verses 9 to 11, that is why he is praying for them to grow in love. He finishes verse 11 by saying that explicitly. Verse 11 finishes by saying to the glory and praise of God. Paul is saying that everything that has gone before is for the glory and praise of God, which is who Jesus Christ is, of course. You see, Paul knows that Christians like the Philippians, growing more and more in love for God, and love for each other, and love for other people, pleases and glorifies God now. Because it puts on display God's grace and power, which has worked in our lives to change us. And so because for Paul, to live is Christ, he prays for that growth in love in these Christians' lives. And Paul also says that he is looking forward to a future day as well as he prays in this way for the Philippians. He's looking forward, he says, 
to the day of Christ. The day, that is, when Jesus Christ returns to the earth and judges all people. Let me read again from the beginning of verse 9, this time going a bit further still. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. For Christians to be found, to have lived pure and blameless lives, to have lived lives full of righteous fruit, will again on that day be to the praise and glory of God. Because it will be a further, fuller display of the greatness of his saving grace and power, which has made us like that. I want to encourage us to grasp this morning that there is nothing bigger Nothing more significant to live for than the glory and praise of God. And therefore to see that we have the greatest reason to make every effort to keep growing in love for God and people. To do that now, to do that right up to the day of Jesus Christ. Now and then, such genuine love brings praise to God because it's not natural to us. And therefore it displays the glory of his work in changing us. Growing in love, we should all aim to We have the greatest reason to. And thirdly, this morning, let's see, growing in love, we can. Growing in love, we can. There is no doubt that these verses give a high calling, which can seem intimidating And could leave us feeling crushed and hopeless. Abounding more and more in love. With knowledge and all discernment. Being pure and blameless. And filled with the fruit of righteousness. We can't get anywhere near that, can we? The 17th century pastor, John Bunyan, wrote a really helpful short poem about why the salvation God gives is such good news, even compared to God's law. The short poem goes like this. Run, John, run, the law commands, but gives us neither feet nor hands. Far better news the gospel brings. It bids us fly and gives us wings. The wonderful truth this describes is that part of the salvation God gives is the power to do what he calls us to do. Part of the salvation God gives is the power to do what he calls us to do. And that includes the power to carry out God's call to us to love him and to love other people and to grow in that love, which is what we've been thinking about here this morning. And you know, Paul communicates that encouragement to us in these verses as well. Whereas John Bunyan uses the picture of being given wings 
so that you can fly, Paul here uses the picture of fruit. He, in verse 11, he talks about uh, being filled with the fruit of righteousness. That fruit certainly includes love. Now think about fruit for a minute. Whether it's apples, bananas, strawberries, or whatever your favorite fruit is, what is true of all fruit is that they did not just appear out of nothing. Rather, they were produced by a seed which became a living tree or plant or vine. And the great news that we see here is that we ourselves are not expected to be that living tree or plant or vine. Rather, Paul tells us that there is one that is planted inside of us. Paul says in verse 11 that that fruit of righteousness, which includes love, comes through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. And that is what Jesus said about himself, isn't it? In John chapter 15 and verse 5. There Jesus said, I am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever abides, that is, remains in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. Do you need and want to grow in love for God, for your husband or wife? For your children or parents, for your church, for your neighbours, for someone who has done wrong against you? Christian, you are in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ is in you. So you can grow in that love by depending on his strength. Remember, notice, that is exactly what Paul is saying that he does here. He's not so much telling the Philippians here what they should do, as he is telling the Philippians what he is asking God to do in them by praying for them. You can ask God to do the same for yourself and others. You can do that with confidence because, in a quote that I've used a couple of times previously, especially in our Joined to Jesus series that we were doing on Sunday evenings, the same Christ who overcame every temptation and was perfectly obedient... That Jesus is in you now, Christian. The Jesus who had compassion on the crowds and healed the sick, that Jesus is in you. The humble Jesus who led as a servant, who washed his disciples' feet, he's in you. The Jesus who suffered and loved to the end, He dwells in you, Christian. Jesus Christ is perfectly righteous and loving. And Christian, he is in you. And he not only puts his righteousness on your legal record with God, he also imparts his righteousness to you so that you become like him in love and in every other way. He has planted, as it were, a righteous seed in you when you came to know him through faith and became a Christian. 
And that seed, as your Christian life goes on, has grown and is growing and will grow into a fruit-producing vine. And so Christ dwelling in us by his Spirit is a guarantee that we can and we will change. Which, remember, is what Paul has already told us in verse 6 of Philippians chapter 1. I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Christ Jesus. Notice then that as with the whole Bible, Philippians 1 verses 9 to 11 are not about how we need to save ourselves. Rather, they are about how God is saving us. Paul prays that the Philippians will be filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. And therefore, growing in love, we should all aim to, we have the greatest reason to, and yes, we can. So by God's gracious power, through Jesus Christ in us, for his glory, may we all do so. Amen. Well, to finish our service, we're going to sing uh, two hymns. Uh, the first one is uh, a request to God that he would indeed uh, enable us to be loving towards each other. Let love be found among us, a love from God alone, the hallmark of the children whom God delights to own. And then secondly, um, we'll sing about the love of Jesus Christ. And in the chorus, we will say, love incarnate, love divine, captivate this heart of mine till all I do speaks of you.
Well, please do join us this evening again at six o'clock if you can as we continue our series in the book of 1 Peter. But now for this morning, let's close in prayer. Father, please give us a passion for your glory and therefore a hunger to be filled with love and all the fruits of righteousness. We praise you that we don't need to save ourselves, but that through Jesus you are saving and changing us. Father, continue the good work of transforming us that you have begun, we pray. By your power, through the spirit of the risen Jesus in us, cause us to grow in love more and more. Love for you, for all people, and for all that is excellent. Through your word, continue to speak to us, that we may have knowledge and all discernment about what to love and how to love. And prepare us. For the day of Jesus Christ we ask. In all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.